There's someone else that's going to tell me. I don't know what it was. Uh, what was it? What was it? Oh, yeah. Shark! Just kidding. Fast car. Poor Adam. Just let it happen. He got tummy troubles. Just let it happen. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> I feel bad, Rob. Really? Yaya here with Nowhere Homesteady. It's canning day again, and today we're going to can these beautiful carrots. Carrots. <laughs> um, I'm still new to canning, so this will be my first time doing carrots. Um, I'm going to wash them up. Um, I've read that you can peel them, not peel them. It's kind of your own preference, so I'm going to skip the peeling today and see how they come out. Um, I'd like to hear in the comments what your preference is. Do you peel them? Do you not peel them? Um, and tell me what you like, don't like about them. Uh, I'm not going to film the washing process because that's kind of boring, but uh, I will come back when it's time to chop. So let's get canning. I'm not the best chopper in the world, but that's okay. I'm not a chef. I don't have to be. This is my home kitchen. <laughs> and I don't know if you can see or hear a bullet in the background. He is getting wood down into the basement because he is building a shelf for our jars of canning and canning supplies. Because we started this canning and we don't have any place to store anything. How about that? I've got seven jars out because my canner will only hold seven jars at a time. It's the same way that I use pints or quarts, seven jars, and that's it. So far, this process has been pretty easy. The hardest part really was washing these carrots. Um, since I decided not to skin them, I did scrub them pretty well. Uh, and I have trouble with my hands. Uh, I had carpal tunnel surgery about a year ago and I have not fully recovered from that and I honestly don't know if I ever will. Um, my right hand tires out really quickly um, as well as my right shoulder now too. That's uh, not fun. Uh, and my scrubbers, whoop, that carrot went for a walk. My scrubbers, uh, were all dirty so I used a washcloth a very coarse washcloth to scrub all of the carrots so that took a while so I had to go take a rest for a few minutes between cleaning the carrots and chopping this one's a little thick Bullet. 
taking wood down for our new canning shelf. I'd ask him to give us a wave, but he is very carefully getting wood into the basement stairs, which are very steep and hard to navigate. So we're just going to say hi to his backside. Hi, backside bullet. What's going on? Hello. <laughs> Change your mind, Ranger. You know where I'll be. Poor Ranger does not like the stairs. He is scared to death of those stairs and will not go down there. I can't blame them. They're steep. They are very steep. Please be careful. My hand is starting to tire out. Now the recipe I'm using is a raw pack recipe. So I put the carrots in here raw. They are not blanched or pre-cooked. Um, this tool is, technically it's a funnel. I didn't need to use it because these are wide mouth jars. Um, and I don't know if you can see it, but it has measurements on here. Uh, so it has eight quarter, half and three quarter and then the very bottom would be one inch and the recipe i'm using calls for one inch of headspace so when i put this on here the one inch mark would be just a little below the ring of the jar so i've got a couple of carrots that are above that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and fill my water Oops, I got a little too much water in there. I'm at three quarters of an inch, so I'm gonna pour some back, just a little bit. There we go. And then, get some of the air bubbles out. And I use the handle of a wooden spoon. I'm eventually going to get a proper air bubble removal tool. Of course, it's hard to get down there in between the carrots and you kind of don't want room between the carrots. So I'm just kind of punching them around a little bit to uh, press them into each other, but that's also knocking air bubbles out looks good. Okay, set that aside. Looks 
good to me. Get the air bubbles out. Press some carrots down. I could probably add a carrot or two to this one. If one comes up too full, I can add that. Just a scooch of water. The reason I'm not pouring is because pouring from this pitcher, I would definitely pour too much. Perfect. Okay. So, you know, this one started out with carrots sitting proud above the water. And now that I've just kind of been tapping this spoon handle in here, they've shifted enough that there's actually extra room. <laughs> Y'all, a few weeks ago, I was scared of canning. Can you believe it? I thought I was going to kill us. Perfect. I really did. I was scared to do it. I was scared that I was going to mess up and ruin our food and make us sick. And so far, that hasn't happened. Now, this is only my third run. Um... But, so far, the ones that I have canned, A, they have stayed sealed, so that's a good thing. B, uh, it actually looks appealing, which I've seen some stuff online that doesn't look appealing, but everybody says, hey, that's how it's supposed to look, and it's going to look, it's going to taste great when you open it. Um, so... You know, we're doing pretty good. C, I've already eaten at least one item that I've canned. And it was great. It was great. It tasted just like as if I had made it fresh.
So here's a question and leave an answer in the comment below. Is it okay to have a little bit of carrot sticking up out of the juice when you run it through the canner? Or does the water need to be completely covering the carrots when you start the process? These are things that I don't know. And I would like to know, and I'm sure other people would like to know. So if you know the answer to this question, uh, please answer it and, and explain why. Don't just answer yes or no. Uh, explain why, because I need to know why. <laughs> I'm detailed. I need to know why. I am making sure that everything is covered, though. Um, that's why you saw me pull one out and put it in another jar, because it was sticking up. to wipe the rims. Of each jar to make sure that they are clean. Fingertip tight is what I was told. I've already put about two inches of water in my canner and I'm going to add a splash of vinegar. And the vinegar will help keep the water from uh, discoloring the outsides of the jars. And I'm going to arrange the jars in here. And since these are raw packed and cold, I'm putting them in cold, I mean cold water. I wish I had a rack to stabilize them. Maybe one day. Alright. So, there they are. Alright. I don't know if you can see this. The lid has an arrow on it. And that's going to line up with the arrow on the handle. And then I'll twist it closed. Now on the canner itself, this is where the weight will go once it comes up to pressure, up to its minimal pressure. This is your pressure valve that shows that it has some pressure in it. Uh, but for now, I will turn it on high and it's going to get started. See this valve here just popped up a few minutes ago. And she's a steaming. I don't know if you can see it, but there's, I don't know 
know if you can see it. I can barely see it. There's steam coming out of that center valve where the jiggler is going to go. I'm going to wait a couple more minutes. You're supposed to let it steam for 10 minutes before you put the weight on. So I'm going to let it go for a couple more minutes before I put the weight on. So it's been about 10 minutes, and I'm gloving up for this because that is hot steam. I am not burning my hands. Some people are a little distraught on, but <laughs> yeah, I'm not burning my hands for this. Um, before I do this, let me describe this for you. This is a 10 pound weight, so this is a three in one weight. Um, this has drop on weight, so by itself, it's a five pound weight. And then you drop this on, and that makes it a 10 pound weight. Somehow it'll drop down on it. Uh, there we go. And then the third part makes it a 15 pound weight, which I've left it in my canning supplies. Um, so, anyway, we use a 10 pound weight here because of our elevation. There we go. And, bloop. and now we will wait for it to start jiggling. <laughs> if y'all saw my jiggle video, it jiggles, and uh, once it starts jiggling, then I will start the timer for 25 minutes. It's jiggling! It's jiggling! It's jiggling! Alright, so now I'm going to set the timer for 25 minutes, and after the 25 minutes, I'll turn the heat off, and then let it come down naturally to zero pressure. Uh, so what the jiggle means is, since it has the 10 pound weight on it, it now has 10 pounds of pressure inside this pan. Uh, the water is boiling, there's enough steam in here, and so it has 10 pounds of pressure. So each time it jiggles, it's releasing that little bit of pressure, and it's maintaining 10 pounds of pressure. So I'm gonna set the timer, and I will check back with you at the 25 minute mark. So it's been 25 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat off. And it's going to keep jiggling for a little bit as it releases, as it cools down and releases the steam. Uh, I'm just going to leave it set and it will start slowly getting quieter and depressurizing. And that's going to take a little while, maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour, it depends. Um, so, I will come back in and show you what it looks like when it's all done. You can probably hear my dishwasher in the background. I hope you can hear this slight hissing. But at any rate, even though the weight is not jiggly anymore, this valve is still up which means there is still pressure in the canner. Now, the instructions that I'm following says to allow the canner to come down to zero pressure before opening it. So that needs to pop down before I open this canner. And it's still making noise, which means there's still uh, a little bit of boiling going on. There's still steam pressurized in there. So I'm not opening this yet. Um, I just wanted to point this out. Uh, that would be a rookie mistake to open this too soon. Um, it could cause, uh, could cause too much steam to come out at one time. A, it could burn me. Some people do this though. Uh, some people rush the process. Um, I have also read that it can cause, uh, the, the sudden release of pressure can cause um, the contents or the fluids to rush out of your jars. Um, so you're losing fluids out of your jars. You're also potentially compromising the seal out of, uh, from your lids, uh, especially with oily or greasy contents, um, which... This isn't really an oily, greasy, I'm not canning meat here, um, but if, if you have something that's, that's really oily or greasy, uh, if, the, if, if it gets on the, the lid under the seal uh, or on the, the top edge of the jar, 
then that could compromise its ability to seal. And then once you pull it out and it cools, your lid could pop and you've wasted, you know, that amount of food, especially if you don't catch it in time. Um, now, of course, if you've caught it in time, you could just stick it in the fridge and use it within a few days and you've not lost anything. But how many of us catch that, you know, in time? So, uh, I, a lot of people know that there are things that I don't follow rules on, but, uh, especially when I'm still learning, I'm going to follow the rules. So here I am following the rules. I'm not going 80 miles an hour. So it's been about an hour since I turned the stove off. Uh, you can see by the red dot here that the burner is still hot, but the uh, pressure valve has gone down. I'm going to go ahead and remove the weight. Oops. Pull straight up, don't try to angle it. Um, so all the pressure has gone out of the can. I'm gonna let it cool naturally for a little bit. Um, I've just started making dinner, uh, as you see on the pot. So I'm gonna let it cool naturally for a little bit before I open it, because there's still quite a bit of steam inside the pan. So I'm gonna let it cool, and then I'll open it up after we eat. All right, so we are ready to open this guy up. I always like to put on oven mitts because my hands are sensitive. And even though I don't hear any rumbling from it, there may still be a little steam. So I'm going to twist it open and then I'm gonna open it away from me so that any steam that may still be in there does not hit me in the face. And that was a little bit. I don't know if you saw it, but I saw it. Ooh, they shifted a little bit. One of the jars is leaning over. I'm going to get my, my claws. Thanks, Mrs. Hacks, for the homesteader. Ooh, those look good. Uh, we... Nice canned carrots. They smell delicious, too. Can you smell them? Oh. I don't smell anything. <laughs> And they are still bubbling. They're still boiling inside. I've heard several of the lids ping already. So they some of these are sealed. What do they do? They ping. 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 <laughs> ping, ping, ping. Eh, it does that. <coughs> These are not made for big girls. That's okay. As long as it protects my shirt from things, I really don't care if it's tied or not. All right. All seven jars are out. And there we are. You can see they're still they're still boiling inside and they'll stay they'll stay boiling it'll take another hour or so just for that to stop and they'll cool overnight before I take the rings off and wash the jars so these are the recipes that I'm using the ball complete book of home preserving and the canning meat cookbook. I'll put the links down below. These are great resources for beginning canners. Um, this is my third time to can. Third. That's it. I had my first time with friends showing me what to do. My second time, I used a book that had incorrect information, so I googled it and winged it. 
and my third time I used the recipe for carrots out of this book. Um, it was easy, super easy. So I highly recommend, you know, if, you, if you're scared of it, find somebody that knows how to do it and walk you through it. Super easy. <laughs> I was scared of it. <laughs> yeah. I was scared of canning. I really was. I was scared of canning. I was scared I was going to blow up my kitchen. We've had a mishap before with a pressure cooker where we ended up with broth on the ceiling. <laughs> so, you know, um, but I've had, you know, some help along the way. Um, that's it. That's it. Uh, it's been a great experience. I'm looking forward to more, learning more, diving into this with more foods and soups and stews and things that will make our lives a whole lot easier as we get busier. Um, being able to just come home, pop open a jar of stew, pop it in the microwave, in a bowl, and say, honey, dinner's ready. And it tastes just exactly the same way as, as it would as if I had slaved over the stove for three or four hours that day. And before long, we will have the shelving completed so we can move everything you have already done out of the kitchen. Yeah. So we can make room for even more to prepare for family that will be here next week for Christmas. And, you know, part of this is part of this is for daily life. Part of this is for what if. What if things go south? What if food's not readily available? we'll have it in our pantry what if but i try not to think about that because that makes me depressed you know i just like the way th the thing jiggles you know <laughs> yeah. i like the way it jiggles it jiggles yeah we're, we're doing this more just to have food on hand because <laughs> both of us have a hard time eating well um when we when we we push ourselves to the absolute limit and we're, uh, we're go, 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 and then we crash. And when we crash, we make bad food choices. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. hope is that um, by preparing meals ahead of time, well in advance, and uh, you know, building up a surplus like this and eating out of our rotations, um, maybe it'll save us money, but that's not really the goal. It's to have better food on hand. Better food, because we, we tend to go for what's easy, what's quick and easy. So if I can go ahead and pre-make things that will be quick and easy on days that I do have the good energy to use and we have the resources for it, that makes it worth it. And if it keeps him happy, that keeps me happy. They say happy wife, happy life, but it's really if both parties are happy. And if I can keep him happy, then I'm happy. And if he keeps me happy, then he's happy too. All right. We like being happy. <laughs> That's true. We like being happy together. That makes life wonderful. All right, guys. That's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, go out and enjoy what God has given you.